Officials from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are struggling to prevent radioactive water from leaking into the ocean. They're using a test site to trial a possible solution. The technique involves freezing radioactive water. An NHK crew was allowed into the site. The facility simulates an underground tunnel at the Fukushima plant. The water inside is assumed to be radioactive. Some of it has been frozen. Groundwater has been flowing into the plant's turbine buildings and becomes tainted with radioactivity. Water used to cool melted fuel also becomes contaminated. Some of it has been flowing into underground tunnels connected to the turbine buildings. Highly radioactive water accumulates in these tunnels. TEPCO officials say this is the main source of radioactive water leaking into the sea. This is TEPCO's plan. Pipes are inserted into the tunnels along with a clay-based packer. A liquid coolant then goes into the pipes to freeze the packer and surrounding contaminated water. The ice serves as a wall to stop the water. Workers will then pump out any contaminated water left in the tunnels. TEPCO workers began the experiment in August. They say they created a two-meter square ice wall in about six weeks. The ice wall is preventing water from flowing in here. So the test shows it's possible to block the flow. But real tunnels have pipes and other obstacles, so workers conducted a test with such obstacles. They say they could create an ice wall by installing extra coolant pipes. But TEPCO officials face a difficult challenge. The radiation in actual tunnels prevents workers from entering. They have to refer to engineering plans for the plant to install coolant pipes from above ground. We have to fully understand the structure inside the tunnels by referring to the engineering drawings. TEPCO officials plan to begin the work to freeze contaminated water early next year. A few months later, they hope to start removing the around 10,000 tons of radioactive water that has accumulated in the tunnels. Workers at the plant are trying to prevent more leaks of contaminated water. Forecasters are calling for heavy rain later this week. The workers are adding pumps to keep rainwater tainted with radioactive substances from overflowing. Heavy downpours caused rainwater to overflow Sunday from 11 barriers around tanks holding radioactive wastewater. Water in six of the barriers contained radioactive strontium that exceeded the government-approved limit. The highest reading was more than 70 times the maximum permitted level. TEPCO officials said the pumps were unable to keep up as the rains poured down. Workers will add 19 more pumps and they plan to use larger draining hoses. That will make it possible to transfer water more quickly. A TEPCO spokesperson says the company may add more workers if necessary. Managers of Japan's crippled nuclear plant say they've detected radioactive cesium a kilometer off the coast. It's the second time they've found the substance that far out at sea. But they say the levels are very low and won't affect the environment. Workers with Tokyo Electric Power Company or TEPCO have been analyzing seawater at five locations off Fukushima Daiichi. They took a sample on Friday and found that it contained 1.6 becquerels per liter of cesium-137. TEPCO officials say that's well below the safety standard for drinking water set by the World Health Organization, which is 10 becquerels per liter. Workers also found cesium at the location two weeks ago. The officials say they can't explain why the substance is present there, but almost non-existent elsewhere outside the plant's harbor. They're planning to install devices that can check radiation levels offshore at all times. As TEPCO managers struggle for decommission, to decommission rather the Fukushima plant, they're trying to prepare another facility to resume operations. These people are dysfunctional. They're working to restart two reactors on the Sea of Japan coast. They allowed the media to see a new safety feature. The filtered vent system would be used in the event of a severe accident. TEPCO workers have started installing the devices in the reactor building at the Kashiwazaki-Kariwa plant in Niigata Prefecture. 
Filtered vents are designed to release pressure in containment vessels if an accident occurs. They use a combined water and chemical filtration system to reduce the amount of radioactive materials released to almost zero. The governor of Niigata is worried the system cannot contain all dangerous substances. Even if we use this system, we still cannot filter out some of the rare gases, such as xenon or krypton. So we need to come up with evacuation plans. Utilities cannot restart reactors until they install filtered vent systems. The devices are required under new, tougher safety standards. Last month, TEPCO executives applied to nuclear regulators for the safety screening needed to restart two reactors at Kashiwazaki Kariwa. They plan to complete refurbishments on one of them by the end of March. All 50 commercial reactors in Japan are offline. Power companies have applied for inspections to restart units at seven plants. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Japanese officials have given their backing to a United Nations movement against the inhumane consequences of nuclear warfare. For the first time, they've signed a statement renouncing the use of nuclear weapons under any circumstances. It says if humanity is to survive, such weapons must never be used again. Last month, TEPCO executives applied to nuclear regulators for the safety screening needed to restart two reactors at Kashiwazaki Kariwa. You clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A committee of the UN General Assembly that deals with disarmament adopted the statement. Representatives from 125 countries signed it. The catastrophic humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons are a fundamental and global concern. The document says nuclear weapons have immense uncontrollable destructive capabilities and are indiscriminate in nature. It says the use and testing of such weapons have shown the consequences are unacceptable. Delegates from around the world have adopted three similar safe statements since May of last year, including one at a conference on the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Up until now, Japanese officials have refused to participate. Many Japanese, including survivors of the atomic bombings, criticize the government. Japan is the only country to have been hit by the atomic bomb. And the critics said, because of that, Japanese officials had a responsibility to sign the statement. But government officials said the phrase rejecting the use of nuclear arms under any circumstances is incompatible with Japan's reliance on the U.S. nuclear umbrella. The latest statement says awareness of the consequences must underpin all approaches toward disarmament. The wording opened the door for countries such as Japan. The overall context of the statement now conforms to the country's security policy and its disarmament efforts. Therefore, Japan decided to participate. Japanese officials plan to host an international conference on disarmament and non-proliferation next April in Hiroshima. For the second time in a week, a rare ore fish has turned up on the California coast. This fish is so rare, most of us had never heard of it before last week. This one washed ashore in Oceanside. It was more than 13 feet long. Last week, a dead 18-foot ore, 18 ore fish was found just off Avalon. Ore fish live at depths below 3,000 feet. They're rarely seen at the surface. Japanese legend has it that they beach themselves to warn of impending earthquakes. Dozens did just that on the coast of Japan before the massive quake and tsunami in 2011. We've had two down in Southern California. Let's hope there's no truth. Let's start turning up Japanese here. Japanese legend. Yeah. I don't like this one bit. I don't know.
I look forward to giving a entertaining and fun and uplifting performance. I believe it's time to look forward now to the future. It is so important that we continue to raise money, but it is also important that we remind the world that Japan is now safe and that the doors are wide open for tourists from all over the world to come in and enjoy the beautiful country. From Japanese people, we thank you. We thank you for your message and love. Officials from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are struggling to prevent radioactive water from leaking into the ocean. They're using a test site to trial a possible solution. The technique involves freezing radioactive water. An NHK crew was allowed into the site. The facility simulates an underground tunnel at the Fukushima plant. The water inside is assumed to be radioactive. Some of it has been frozen. Groundwater has been flowing into the plant's turbine buildings and becomes tainted with radioactivity. Water used to cool melted fuel also becomes contaminated. Some of it has been flowing into underground tunnels connected to the turbine buildings. Highly radioactive water accumulates in these tunnels. TEPCO officials say this is the main source of radioactive water leaking into the sea. This is TEPCO's plan. Pipes are inserted into the tunnels along with a clay-based packer. A liquid coolant then goes into the pipes to freeze the packer conducted a test with such obstacles. They say they could create an ice wall by installing extra coolant pipes. But TEPCO officials face a difficult challenge. The radiation in actual tunnels prevents workers from entering. They have to refer to engineering plans for the plant to install coolant pipes from above ground. We have to fully understand the structure inside the tunnels by referring to the engineering drawings. TEPCO officials plan to begin the work to freeze contaminated water early next year. A few months later, they hope to start removing the around 10,000 tons of radioactive water that has accumulated in the tunnels. Workers at the plant are trying to prevent more leaks of contaminated water. Forecasters are calling for heavy rain later this week. The workers are adding pumps to keep rainwater tainted with radioactive substances from overflowing. Heavy downpours caused rainwater to overflow Sunday from 11 barriers around tanks holding radioactive and surrounding contaminated water. The ice serves as a wall to stop the water. Workers will then pump out any contaminated water left in the tunnels. TEPCO workers began the experiment in August. They say they created a two-meter square ice wall in about six weeks. The ice wall is preventing water from flowing in here, so the test shows it's possible to block the flow. But real tunnels have pipes and other obstacles, so workers